the uh, individual who controls one of the two largest nuclear arsenals in the world making this kind of a threat. On the one hand, you have to understand he's doing this to get us to back off from supporting Ukraine at a time that his economy is severely threatened. On the other hand, you have to take it seriously. And uh, General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, ought to be in touch. I hope he's in touch with his counterpart in Russia and saying, hey, look, you know, this is irresponsible. You know, you, you cannot threaten uh, you know, nuclear annihilation to anyone else uh, over your dispute with uh, a, a, a free neighboring country uh, that's, uh, you're premeditated, you're illegal, you're immoral invasion of another country, and now you're talking about nuclear weapons. So, so, so that you have to look at. But this crisis is fundamentally about three things. First of all, it's about Vladimir Putin. And uh, a historian told me the other day that he's uh, experiencing a, a rationality slippage after 22 years in power. And this is uh, not unusual among authoritarians. Number two, this is about Ukraine. And the Ukrainians are showing resilience uh, that the Russians did not expect. Uh, they are slowing uh, their uh, their ability to take on uh, Ukraine and to occupy it and su to subjugate the government. Now, Russia hasn't thrown everything militarily at them yet. That could change. But right now, the Ukrainians are doing far better than the Russians anticipate. But ultimately, most importantly, it really is about Western democracies. And can they rise to and 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 collect and come common cause in a way? that would really shift the momentum uh, for the global future and who shapes the global future. To me, this is the most important for markets, for global markets, for people investing anywhere in the world. This is the most important part of this of all. So you have to save Ukraine, but most of all, you have to uh, show that Western democracies, again, can come together in common cause to shape the global future. Fred, one other question, I guess, on the minds of folks here. Um, BP, the largest foreign direct investor in this country, here for three decades, decides to divest itself at a major, major loss uh, for the company of its assets when it comes to that 20 percent stake in Rosneft. Do you believe that Exxon and other U.S. companies are going to be forced by the government and by public opinion to do the same? And by sanctions. Uh, look, uh, you know, you have major U.S. companies that have uh, really involved uh, relationships with, with, with Russia. You have scientific exchanges, you have a, a space station where you have astronauts training on both sides of, of, of the Atlantic in Russia and, and the US. Will that continue? Uh, you have scientific exchanges. You know, th this is a, Russia is a great civilization. It is an amazing society. It has riches that are, uh, that are really untapped and not entirely uh, not entirely uh, supported. And Vladimir Putin and his actions toward Ukraine are endangering all of this. And in the meantime, you will have more and more U.S. companies and, and European companies backing off from their investments. You're hearing a lot about German companies, and they would be the last to back off. The German companies are right now looking for ways out of some of the things they're doing because they just see it's not sustainable in the current situation. Fred, it's Dan here in Abu Dhabi, and I think you've just been characterizing it perfectly in your writing over the past couple of days, because what we are seeing now is history being made. The West is isolating Russia politically, diplomatically, economically, financially, really for the first time, a major power in Russia, a major nuclear power, a major cyber power being shut out from the international community. When you look at what happens next here, Fred, do you think this moment in history is going to reshape how the West's engaged with Russia forevermore? Uh, Dan, Dan I, I think it really will. And there are two questions. Uh, you know, there's a crucial question of how Vladimir Putin now responds. So he could respond in terrific frustration and just double down and carpet bomb Ukraine. He could kill tens of thousands of people. He could bomb civilian centers. Uh, he, he, there's no doubt with the power of his military and with all of the might he has that he, 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 can, he, he can impose his will in, on Ukraine if he wants to. We haven't seen the 190,000 troops doing everything that they can in Ukraine. 
Uh, on the other hand, he could say, you know, uh, you know, this just can't be done this way, and I have to engage in negotiations for a new European security order that will look after Russian interests, uh, but, um, uh, but, but the, the path that I've chosen is not working. The Pope has said it's not working. The president of China, in his own way, has said it's not working. And clearly, uh, the European Union, the United States, North America has said it's not working. Uh, but I think at this point, it's now become about Putin's survival. And he's not an entirely rational actor. We don't know what he's going to do. And so we really have to brace for something that's not just these next few days, but it could be for weeks and even months to come. Uh, but he has really taken a risk that he'd not taken in, in, in the 22 years that he's been in power. And this risk, as you said, Dan, is going to be decisive for the European future. And I think it's really going to be decisive for whether the, uh, uh, the transatlantic community, the U.S. and its democratic allies can come together in common cause to stop him from what he was, uh, what he's trying to do in Ukraine. Indeed, and the Kremlin out on a limb, you say this is a war that threatens his own survival, Fred. Really appreciate your time today, Fred. Thank you again for joining us. That's Fred Kemp there from the Atlantic Council. Hopefully speak to you again soon. Up next on the program, more global reaction to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's been a mixed session so far for Asian equities. We'll bring you more market analysis when we come back. Stay with us.